Okay, so once we've made our adjustments to our levels, we hit the triangle in the lower left corner of the adjustments panel to return to all of the adjustments. And if we decide we want to make adjustments later to the levels, but not completely delete, the adjustment layer, we can just go click click on the adjustment layer for levels and go back and make adjustments later. Okay, but we, we are happy with ours right now. The adjustments panel is new to Photoshop CS4 and makes it more convenient, but you can still access these non-destructive image adjustments within the layers panel in earlier versions of Photoshop. This little circle that's half black and half white, you can click, hold down, and you would pick the adjustment, for instance, levels like we just did, and you'd access it that way. Okay, so now we're hitting that corner and we're ready to go back and we're going to pick hue and saturation. Hue and saturation is a simple way to alter the overall color of the painting and we're going to leave it on master. You can adjust individual channels, but I don't recommend that as a beginner. We're wanting to adjust the overall color temperature and vividness of your painting. We're going to move the hue. It's a little bit bluish, so I'm going to move a little bit towards the red. And I'm also saturating the color a little bit. The painting is very vivid and it's sometimes boosting the saturation with a painting like this helps things look more accurate. And by the way, there are automatic image adjustments in Photoshop, image, auto tone, auto contrast, or auto color. And you never want to use those on a painting or other artwork. Every artwork is different and there's certainly no way that Photoshop can make an automatic judgment about what would look right for this painting. So I'm looking at the painting and it still looks like it could use a little bit more contrast contrast compared to the original. So I'm going to go back to brightness and contrast. And within the brightness contrast panel, I'm going to emphasize the contrast just a little bit. And then I'm going to mess with the brightness. I'm bringing the brightness down and the contrast up a little bit. And now I'm seeing something that really closely resembles my original work. So once I'm happy with it, I save the file as an original PSD high resolution Photoshop file. And then you're ready to make a copy in any format. I suggest always saving your document as a high resolution Photoshop original and then making copies in whatever format at whatever resolution that people request. The ideal resolution is 300 pixels per inch at 100% of the viewing size or the printing size. We can see the resolution of our image going to image, image size. Now we can see it's four inches by four inches at 300 pixels per inch. So we're kind of stuck with the resolution of the camera that took the original image. So we've saved our original as a Photoshop.psd original and I suggest saving all of your Photoshop originals if you have a portfolio of work, saving it to a single folder. Then I suggest making copies to give to people. Like let's say people have requested a folder full of JPEGs. So now we'll take our Photoshop.psd, we'll go to File, Save As, and instead of PSD, we'll go to JPEG. So it's in a JPEG format, and it's on the desktop. I'm going to make a new folder, and we're going to call it Podcast Art and Create. And this works similarly with Mac or Windows. Just make a folder and remember where the folder is. We hit save and then we get JPEG options. This has to do with the quality of the image. You could make a smaller file size, which is indicated here, but less quality. For instance, if you wanted to have something on the internet that would load quickly. But in our case, we're just working with preparing images for a portfolio. And as long as it's okay with the person you're giving it to, we can make our image pretty high in quality. Here's the file size. We can hit OK. And we've created a JPEG copy. In terms of organizing your image, I suggest keeping all of your original Photoshop.psd formatted images in a single folder that's clearly labeled. And maybe keep a separate folder of JPEG copies and then keep a separate folder of PDF copies too. PDF and JPEGs are formats that are pretty ubiquitous. They could pretty much be opened on any computer. If you wanted to save for the web, you'd reduce image, image size, 72 pixels per inch at whatever size you're going to want to use it on the web. Hit OK. And then go to, I'll zoom in so you can see it, File, instead of Save As, Save for Web and Devices. And you can see a preview and it helps prepare images. We want to pick JPEG for continuous tone images. And you can see the presets and, and what the quality would be, how it will look and what the file size would be. Once you're happy with the settings, hit save and save your, your image. So let's talk about preparing three-dimensional artwork. It's a little bit different. Like any other object in three-dimensional space, we're going to adjust the values and the tones to reflect the most detail in the highlights and the mid-range and the darkest areas without losing any of the detail. Okay, so we're going to go to the adjustments panel and we're going to select levels. We can see that there's not a lot of information in the dark range, so I'm going to bring that over until 
it looks okay. And then I'm gonna adjust the mid-range to compensate for it. The highlights, there's a lot that's been washed out in the simple photograph that we, we took here. So I don't think I'm gonna adjust this any, any further. I'm gonna bring this, the mid-range over here, I'm gonna move this arrow a little to the right and try to bring out a little bit more of the character of the piece that maybe was missing and washed out by the flash photography. So now that we've adjusted the value properly, let's go back to the uh, adjustments panel and we're gonna select hue and saturation and adjust the color. So there's not a lot of color information to work with, but I do know that, for instance, the, the original vase was a little bit warmer in color. We're gonna move it so it's a little bit warmer and maybe just saturate it a tiny bit. So our work here is done. We save the file as a high resolution Photoshop original, and then we can save as and make a copy in whatever format we'd want. So one way to give people a portfolio of images is to give them a folder filled with JPEGs or PDFs of your images, and they can open them and look at them. Another common way to make a digital portfolio is to organize it as a PowerPoint presentation. So we've opened up PowerPoint, and we have a blank document here, and we will click here and we'll just type Title. You can adjust things like type size and type face, just like you would in a word processor. And we get rid of boxes by selecting them and deleting them if we don't need them. I suggest keeping the PowerPoint presentation very simple. We're really showcasing your artwork and that's where the creativity should be visible and you should just make it as easy as possible for people to view your artwork and be able to make an accurate assessment. So we have the title page and then we'll go to the new slide icon with the plus on it and click to create a new slide. Now for this slide, we wanna select this box and delete it and then bring this box further down because we're gonna type the information for your slide. Generally speaking, we want the title of the piece, the artist, the medium, oil, etc., and the date. And that's a little big, that might detract from our artwork, so I'm going to select it, and I'm gonna go over here to the formatting palette. I'll bring that in so you can see it. Here's the formatting palette that was floating outside of our little film here. And I'm gonna change the type size to maybe something around 32, and we'll move this out of the way. So now we're ready to insert the picture. We go to Insert, Picture, and we have to navigate to it. We know it's on the desktop, and it's in a folder, Podcast Art. I go click to open it, and I select laurapainting.jpg, insert, and it appears. So we're gonna shrink the image by grabbing one of the corners and stretching it until we can see our type as well. And then we're gonna center it. Even with something this simple, once you have the type at a type size and an arrangement and a position and the image in a position that you want, I suggest selecting this and doing edit, copy, edit, paste. And you'll see a new copy of exactly the same thing. So that way, when you import your next image, you can just delete this one and then insert picture and find that one and then change the title, the artist, the medium, and the date. So it's in a consistent position, it's a consistent typeface and size and everything looks very uniform in your presentation. So once you finish your PowerPoint presentation and you have all of your images going, you can just go to File, Save, you title it, Pod. This format right here, PPTX, is the modern PowerPoint format. If you wanted it to be compatible with older versions of Microsoft Office, you can save it as .ppt instead. Again, remember where you saved it and hit save, and there's our PowerPoint presentation. Or you could save as and choose PDF in order to make a multi-page PDF document. I highly recommend having a web presence. That way, if you're talking to somebody about your artwork, they say, I'd like to see that. If you're anywhere near a computer, then you can just go to your website and say, here it is. The most professional way to do that is to have your own .com where you actually buy your own address. There are a lot of places where you can post portfolios or be part of existing websites, as well as social networking sites. Look at your image on different computers. What appears fine on one might appear dark on another. Adjust your image so that it's acceptable no matter where it's viewed. The bottom line is listen to the person that's requesting the files and give them exactly what they want. Save your high resolution Photoshop originals and then save a copy in exactly the format that they request at exactly the resolution that they request and give it to them. Make it easy for the people that you want to impress. Well, that's about it. Thanks for listening and hope you enjoyed the podcast.